walk me through what you've done so far. This is a lot of progress that's been made. Last week on Sailing Adrift, we started the framework for the forward head. Vanity countertop. Toilet will go right there. Bench to put your feet on and shave your legs. And then there's you. Yep, there's me. We also built a shower pan with a surprise feature. Oh, so that butthole was not intentional. We began running our plumbing routes and brainstorming the electrical plans. Oh yeah, what else do you want to do? What do you want to do next? The head is still a bit of a mess, but I just wanted to go through all the plumbing. I really like these Levac toilets, at least from a concept perspective. They are tiny. Um, I don't know why they're so small in profile, but they'll work. And they're very, very simple. Whichever water you use goes up to a loop, but instead of using a traditional vented loop, you use a very specific plug that Levac provides. So you basically just drill a 3 16 inch hole in the top of this or five millimeters and then you stick the plug in black for below the water line white for above the water line and that allows just a little bit of air in so it prevents siphoning so you're not going to get like a flooded boat plus it makes it so when you create the vacuum inside this because the lid here and the seat are both sealed you pull it through the system and it's constantly pulling in fresh water from the sea outside but that little bit of air coming in through the plug breaks that seal eventually, so you only get so much water in your toilet, which is the design of the system. Very simple, very easy. It's as simple as I could make it and still have the conveniences of an electric push button flush and all sorts of things. So hopefully when this is all said and done in both heads, you'll just push the flush button, let it run, push it again if you need extra flushing, if you know what I mean once should be enough for most applications especially in this forward head because the tank is so close in the back head you know it's got a lot farther to travel if it's going to the holding tank so a couple of flush cycles would make sense if we need to we can always stick the handle in and manually pump that sucker too and uh i'm actually pretty excited about it the only thing i'm really worried about so far in all of this is i have a very flexible white hose this stuff this is made to have a tur uh, curve radius of slightly less than this, believe it or not. With this radius being okay, I just wanted to give it a little support, but there's not tension on this. So this is not what's holding it bent like this. This is just the natural radius of the hose. And this is within the uh, six inches that you're allowed to have. I was planning on using that here. This is awesome. This is, uh, I believe this is Shield Sani X hose. So it's like the best on the market, but it doesn't quite have the turn radius. And I don't know why, cause there's a little slack left in this line, but I'm getting some wrinkles here, which kind of worries me. And I don't know if that's a major problem. If it is, I think what I'd probably end up doing is pulling this out a little bit cause it will come out and then forcing it down to increase this radius without kinking and uh, putting another tab like we have up there. I don't think you can see it, but that's screwed into a piece of fiberglass that's tabbed to the hole. We can put one of those right here and screw it into that too. So let me know what you think. Other than that, we're using pretty good turn radiuses, uh, PVC when I can, and I'm overall very happy with the way this plumbing is working out. Now we just need to puncture that hose for that special Levac plug. So it says to put it at the top of the inlet, but it also warns against blockages. So if you've got it right up here, that's the most likely spot that something could eventually fall on it and block that hole, which would defeat the whole purpose of the system. So I'm going to install a hole right here, just to just off center, to keep it as protected as possible. We need to drill. I wanna make it so I can actually get at it too. So um, huh, that's a good point. The access is gonna be over here, but I also don't want it to be, hmm. Yeah, I think I think access to it is the most important. What if we need to change the plug at some point? So we'll put it right here. This is a 3 16 inch bit. Which is as close to five millimeters as I have. It's funny, the instructions say, do a five millimeter hole or one 18th 
inch hole. And if you know anything about drill bits here in the United States, nothing's 1 18th and 1 18th is not even remotely close to five millimeters, but 3 16 is, and that's about the size of this plug. This is it, here we go. The black plug is for below the waterline applications and obviously the loop's never gonna be below the waterline, but it's a matter of where the toilet is. Okay. That's very difficult to push in with one hand, so I'm gonna do this off camera. <laughs> Got it. That was, wasn't easy to get in there. I guess it shouldn't be. But it is in, we have the relief plug. I don't remember doing this on the back one, but I'm sure I did. <laughs> now we have the inlet for the toilet and the outlet for the toilet. It's time to start playing with, we have electrical to run and a bunch of uh, plywood to reinstall. Then it's all oh, fairing, then glassing the, the shower area and then painting and all that fun stuff. I can't wait, it needs to get done though. On to the electrical. Here is my mess in the living room. Why am I in the living room? It's really cold outside and I don't wanna go out there. With all of this electrical, here's my main scheme and here's a secondary one for the, this one really kind of focuses on the toilet, the pump and the timer and this is more the lights. But I gotta check and recheck it because we only wanna do it once. I'm gonna have this board installed in there so that if I really needed to get into all of this and like replace things or diagnose it, I don't have to have to do it in a locker. So we'll just screw this board in on the corners and if we ever need to remove it remove the two um, cords from the power source and pull the whole thing out i thought that might be the smart way but we need to make this a reality on here and then get it installed in the boat well i've wired up as much as i can from the comforts of the house so it's time to go outside and install it. Keepa will not be joining me because she's lazy and all she does is sit around and stare at me with weird gold eyes. All right, our little bomb board will live right up here just like that. This will be to plug in to the back of the USB port and the rest still needs to be connected. The dangly bit hanging off the bottom, this is for the button. I'm not quite sure that where that's gonna end up, so I'm gonna leave this long even though it's obviously way too long. Okay, I'm gonna screw this in place and then we'll finish up the wiring in this slightly more awkward configuration. Cooler too. Now that the plumbing is run and the bomb has been installed, it's time to start hooking it up all together. What are you up to? Crimping, wiring up the pump for our toilet so we don't have to manually do things like peasants, unless we have to. And we'll have that capability too. <laughs> anyway, I'm wiring up the pump. Cool. So you got all your plumbing run and now you're on to electrical. Yes, I have 90% of my plumbing run. The only thing I don't have is the rough in hot and cold up here. Everything else is in. I've got all the plumbing done, Great. I think. All the rough plumbing done and all the rough electrical done. We have two sources of water, the ocean and the tank, the freshwater tank. They are controlled by this Y valve. Why would you look at that? If we go like this, that means it's coming from here and going up to the toilet. If it's coming like this, that means it's coming from down there and going up to the toilet. This one is from the tank. This one is from the ocean. So hopefully we'll mostly get to keep it like that so we're flushing with fresh water. That goes... Watch your face. Up oh, well above the water line, which sits right about here with this tiny little plug-in that looks just a tiny bit of air in, and then that goes down through this hole into to right here, which will supply the toilet. Then it'll go through the toilet along with some bad stuff, and that will go up this into this manual pump, around the corner into an electric pump. Manual pump, electric pump. And then pop out here to where it will either go up into the tank or down into straight into the ocean. We have both options. This one allows the arrow flow this way, and this one allows the arrow flow that way. See how that works? Mm -hmm. Cool. Very cool. You know, part of me was like, why would you ever want this direct route? But I think I, I, I'm glad we installed it. It makes sense in the back tank because it's such a far run up to this tank, because they both use this tank. But back here or up here it's not as important 
Anyway, the reason I said that is because once it's in this tank, there is a there are main through hole for the tank drain. It comes right here. And then that I'm operating, even though you can't see it, it's hard to film. Right down here. That opens and closes that. So when it's closed, like that, this fills up. And then when we have the opportunity to empty it, we just pull that open, it jumps right into the ocean, gravity fed because the water line is again right below the tank. There is also this little T which goes up out and to the deck for pump out. So that's the plumbing side of things. Then there's also hot and cold for the shower that'll live up here like so. And then um, just cold water supply for the sink. And then the shower drain will be installed when we put in the flooring and the sink drain lives right here. So that's all the plumbing that I have installed. On to the electrical side of things. Electrical, we've got these two cords. One of them is 12 gauge, one of them is 16 gauge. The little 16 gauge wire supplies power to this little, um, what do you call that? I think it's called a terminal block. And that terminal block powers things like the USB phone charger in the V-Birth, the reading light in the V-Birth. Pop around the corner, test it out. It should work. It does work. Then it'll also power a vanity light that will live up here and a shower light that'll live up here in the recess. The fatter cable, the 12 uh, gauge wire, comes into this terminal block, which powers the bomb. The bomb is, is basically the electric pump. Power comes in from here and is split to supply to this relay and the terminal block. The relay can handle lots of amperage just like the pump needs, but the things like the timer and um, some different components, really just the timer and the, the button that turns it on can't. So what this relay does is it gets a signal from this to close the big gates and send power to the pump directly. Everything else is protected by a five ounce fuse, which lives in here, goes up into here. The button is pushed. It tells the pump to turn on for a predetermined number of seconds, which we can set with this guy. And then the pump gets powered for that period of time and turns off. That's it, isn't it? Oh, there's also the lights in here will be operated by a switch, which will live right here in this wall. So it'll be tick, 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 tick. Shall we test it? Yeah. This is still a little wet. We over drilled the holes so that uh, they wouldn't rot out when we install the toilet. So I am not going to test it like I thought I would. What we will do is assume that the water test that we've already done is still valid and that the, the uh, flow is coming from the tank here. And we'll stick this hose in a bucket of water and see if we can make it shoot outside. So we need one bucket of water. All right, we have water. Do we, should we test the tank first? Sure, let's test the tank first. It's sucking on me, babe. Hmm. Now, test one. We should hear water being sucked up into the tank and it should stay there. Here we go. Okay. I know if it's leaking. You'd see water dripping out of stuff. I don't see any water dripping. Look at the water out of there. Yeah, it's gone down quite a bit. Okay. Just gonna check every connection over here. Those all look good. I don't see any water coming out of there. Dry. Nothing here. Now we should hear a big goosh. Maybe if it got up high enough to fall into this. Here we go, you ready? Ready. Nothing. That just means that there's gonna be some residual in the back sit that never dumps out. Yeah, when you heal over, I mean, it's never gonna be like that all the time. Yeah. So it'll dump out eventually. Let's open this. And then we're gonna turn this. When we pump this, we should hear water outside. Here we go.
Well, the only thing left to do is test this one. So I'm just going to give it a little suck job, see if we can get some water. It's definitely messing with it. Yeah. I'm, I'm kind of surprised that it's doing that much. I was just kidding, but. You I'm got feeling some pipes. it's going like. Rrr, mm -hmm. rrr, rrr. So it's an exercise in futility. We're going to call that good though. For now. The next step in the process is to put all the covers on now that we've got everything installed and tested. All right, plumbing, check. Yeah. But wait, there's more. All right, put power to the upper one. I could not test this. This is the button, so if I touch these two together, it'd be like the button being pushed. Right now, the timer is only set to one second, so the pump shouldn't run very long. Here we go. Well, that's perfect. Exactly what we're looking for. All right now we can put the covers on. Tune in next week as we put the covers back on and start fiberglassing it up. Hey you, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed what you saw and you want to keep following along, become a subscriber. Just hit that subscribe button below. And special thanks to our patron crew. We really appreciate your support. I got this shirt, nothing underneath it. Not a stitch. Twinkle, twinkle. Yeah. Every time you push a button, it'll work for eight seconds or whatever we end up doing. Like a bull ride. My penis could fit right in here with the old.